Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at ways to estimate both wind speed as well as wind direction as you're uh, flying across, uh, usually cross country in visual conditions. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we know very little bit about the wind today. Um, we're using kind of real world conditions, uh, but we do know that we're going to be traveling, you know, at a relatively straightforward course, basically due west. And um, we're basically going to try to find out ways to identify what our wind is. And I can tell you already in my initial kind of acceleration here that uh, we're getting some pretty bad weather painting going on. So <laughs> it must be significantly windy this morning which uh, really does not surprise me especially because uh, this time of year you get a lot of new whoa that's fun oh boy this is gonna be exciting all right we're airborne and off we go man does this plane need a yaw damper oh boy that's that's that that's bumpy <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're basically gonna go swing ourselves west uh, we're gonna assume uh, whatever our destination is is kind of over here towards the west i'm not t accelerating time or anything it's just this gusty but uh, again this is not atypical for a general aviation plane kind of altitudes like this i'm loving watching that little needle right there it's like whoa <laughs> i've seen much worse than the real plane i remember flying one time and it literally felt like being on an unbalanced washing machine during the entire trip so i'm gonna go ahead and flip on my automatic pilot just to kind of hold my nose where it was just a moment ago. I'm going to go ahead and dial in this uh, new heading that we're going to be traveling on. And now we're going to go ahead and see how we can determine what this really, really messy wind is. I think what I have to do is uh, settle the gusts down a little bit because I think this is going to be a little too bumpy for us today. All right. Uh, I've got to love that ability to just edit weather. So unfortunately now uh, we've sucked a little bit of the randomness out of it, but it should be a little bit more comfortable for us, uh, especially people who get headaches from uh, watching stuff like that. So let's go ahead and select the heading hold here. And uh, we're just going to kind of again, bring ourself directly to the west. And then we're going to start taking a look at our visual methods in which we can determine what the wind is in a given situation. So the first method for determining wind is, uh, again, the unscientific method of, I always call this a flight simulator method, of actually sticking your head up here and looking at the way the plane is moving across the the ground versus which way you expect the plane. So in this case, I notice, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little more clearly, that the aircraft is pointing this way, but I'm noticing that the aircraft is also slightly drifting towards the west. I should say drifting towards the north, my bad. So you can actually see that even though I'm going this way, I'm definitely starting heading this way a little bit, which tells me that my wind has two possibilities. It's either coming from this direction, in which case it is a headwind, or it is coming from this direction, in which case it is a tailwind pushing us in this direction. The problem is we don't know which one of these two positions that the wind is actually traveling from. We do know roughly what the direction is. So the next thing I like to do, and during this case, now this works really, really well in the real plane, go ahead and shut off the automatic pilot, level ourselves off here at about 2,000 feet, flip it back on real fast. Go ahead and put our altitude hold on. Nice. And the other thing we can do is we can actually look out the window to determine exactly what's going on here. So if I actually point my nose at the window, I can pick a spot on the horizon and use that as my reference point. Now, again, you want to keep your head as flat as possible. For example, you see this lake right here? I'm noticing that that lake is uh, sitting there right there. If I actually put my mouse over that lake and do not touch my mouse, you can see, obviously, I've got significant amount of gusting here, which is uh, kind of shifting us around all over the place here. And obviously, the automatic pilot is uh, basically wrestling for control of the aircraft. I'm just going to confirm that the heading hold is still on, which it is not. So that's definitely going to impact our accuracy here. Go ahead and I'll put everything back. Resume back in again. I'll hold my mouse in this position in that lake. Now, if I just let this alone for a minute, watch the path that the mouse takes. Again, I'm not touching the mouse right now. Is it moving to the right or is it moving towards the left? In this case, remember, I've got heading hold on right now. So theoretically, it should be holding me perfectly straight towards that particular object that I'm looking off my nose. But I'm noticing that mouse is progressing aggressively shifting towards the right. As a matter of fact, it's shifted almost, uh, this looks about a half mile distance, which means we have a fairly significant wind here. But you're noticing as I'm getting a little bit closer here, this is staying basically in the same spot. So again, whatever you choose to do to that regard, you want to make sure you're as consistent as possible with that initial placement. In this case, it's about as close to the middle of the screen as I can possibly get it. So we're definitely getting that nice gentle shift to the right. So now that we know the direction that the wind is coming from, we need to figure out how to compensate for the wind. So the method that I use is I pick an object on our flight path and basically modify the uh, pitch of the plane, I should say the um, heading of the plane, until that object stays fixed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come down here and I'm gonna subtract three degrees of heading. So we're gonna go ahead and swing over to the right here. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and center myself out here. Go ahead and line this up at the center of the screen. Again, you can use this little position here if you wanna find yourself at the center. Go ahead and zoom in a little bit like this. And now I'm gonna leave my mouse fixed there, or in the real plane, I, I kid you not, I have a little 
piece of uh, marker right here. This, somebody hit this with a Sharpie, and you can kind of make it out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that in the same position and see, does the mouse, uh, does the position of the object stay in the same spot? If I see the object start to shift this way, that means that our aircraft is going to the right too aggressively, and I need to turn the plane to the left. Likewise, if I see the object start going this way, that means that unfortunately the wind is blowing us from over here too aggressively, and we need to point towards the left. So in this case, if I just sort of hold my mouse perfectly steady here, I'm noticing that my little three degree correction is actually keeping this pretty well centered. So we're doing a nice job. So I happen to know that the wind today is coming from the north. It's actually coming from the uh, southwest. It's going to come from this direction over here, which means, unfortunately for us, that you're not going to see a nearly as aggressive a demonstration. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to take the aircraft and bring us all the way up to the north real quickly. Let's go ahead and uh, come start rotating here. And now the wind is going to be zapping us very aggressively from the side. Go ahead and complete my little spin here. And again, you'll be able to, I'll pick an object again on the horizon to demonstrate this process. I'm just going to come zipping us around. By the way, your attitude indicator is another great marker if you want to go ahead and be able to figure out exactly where the center of your screen is. And it totally depends, of course, how you set up your computer monitor. It depends on how everything else. And for the folks in VR, it's the same technique. You're just going to look directly up for that spot. And that's going to be our spot to catch. Now, notice, now that I'm in a new direction, we'll go take a look at Microsoft mode. Look at how badly I'm being pushed to the right here. This is a significant. Again, crosswind. So now we're going to use the same technique and go ahead and uh, fix it. So I'm going to look directly out the center of the plane. Now let's go ahead and pick a point right here. I'm going to zoom in right here. I've got this little grassy knoll. And now I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of correction. Let's do about five degrees. And I'm just going to put my mouse right where I expect it to be. And I'm just going to see what the mouse does. Does the mouse move, does the object move to the left or does the object move to the right? So I'm just going to kind of just let it kind of sit for a second here. You want to give it a moment. So I'm noticing that the object is shifting this way, despite my guess. So that means I need more correction. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a few more degrees. Usually two or three degrees at a time is going to be more than ample correction. So now I'm going to go ahead and look at that object again. I'm going to hold my mouse over it, and I'm not going to mess with anything here. All I want to confirm is that that object stays at the same point. Again, it's difficult to do this in the real plane. So I'm looking, and my airplane pilot sense says that I'm ever so slightly drifting... Again, I'm uh, using this the best I can by eye. I'm actually pretty darn close. I think I'm actually within a degree. Yep, I need to come to the left exactly one degree. And now I've corrected for the wind. So now that I know that that object is staying consistent, that means whatever crab angle that I've had to actually dial in here is the correct amount of angle to compensate for my wind. Now you're probably sitting here going, okay, that's great, that, that, that's, that's awesome. Um, so um, you still haven't answered a question. I'm like, oh, what's your question? Well, w well, now we know roughly where the uh, wind is coming from and how we need to correct from the wind. How do we know exactly how powerful the wind is? Ah, that's where things get a little bit more interesting. Now, if we were supposed to be heading north to get to our destination, and our total amount of correction angle here, as you can see, is quite significant. It's of 10, 15, it's almost 15 degrees. That tells us exactly how fast the wind is going. Now, you're saying going, what do you mean? Well, I know my aircraft is traveling 130 knots. I also noticed that I need a total of 15 degrees of correction in order to make the aircraft go on a northerly heading. That tells me everything that I need to know. So let's go take a look at one of the charts that you can use for this. Now, what you've probably seen before is you've seen one of these handy dandy crosswind correction charts. So what these basically will tell us is this is the amount of correction we require versus what the wind speed is, and this would give us our two components. Now, the problem with this is, and although this is a really, really good way to estimate things like this, again, like if you had a 40-knot wind and it was at 20 degrees to you, 38 of that would be hitting you in the face. That's basically what this chart tells us. But the problem is we don't know what our ground speed is, and since we don't know our ground speed, we can't calculate accurately where the wind is actually coming from. We know it's a rough direction that's going to be off to the left because we calculated our calculation. That makes sense. But we don't know how fast we're going to get to that particular point. Now, because of that, we're going to have to kind of mix around our techniques a little bit here, jump back inside the aircraft. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to calculate how long it takes you to cover a certain distance. Now, if I were doing accurate, precise navigations here, I would know that to get from this position here to this position here would take a certain amount of time. If we can do that certain amount of time, we can go ahead and calculate what our ground speed is. So let's say, for example, that uh, we're cruising along here and uh, we determine that our ground speed is 110 knots. I should say, let's say, let's say our ground speed is 130 knots, even though our indicated speed is only 105 knots. That would mean that the wind that we are receiving is coming from this direction. 
Now let's say instead that the opposite were true, that we are indicating 100 knots, but our ground speed is only 80 knots. That would indicate that that same wind that was affecting us would actually be hitting us from this direction instead. So having a good control over your ground speed. Now the great thing here is, um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make sure my throttle's working okay here. I feel like it was down a little bit, there we go. One thing I'm noticing here is that my ground speed is actually very, 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 very close to my true airspeed, which means that the wind is almost exactly at a 90 degree angle to the aircraft itself. In this case, uh, the wind I believe is coming out of 240-ish, which means it is roughly 90 degrees. So even though our ground speed is about the same, we're still able to roughly estimate that the wind itself is coming from behind us. Another really, really fun method you can use to do this is uh, you can pick a known VOR and actually see what its speed is. So for example, if I wanted to go flip over, let's uh, go use a borrow Hartford again, because it's easy to remember. Boop. Let's go see if I can pick it up from out here. We can. Let's switch it over to a nav lock mode. We're actually going to have to swing ourselves to the south here, because I believe it's going to be roughly east, if I recall correctly. Let's face to the east. There it goes. So we're going to go ahead and say we want to go to, we don't want to go from. Go ahead and get this a little bit closer. Again, without knowing what your ground speed is, it's going to be very difficult to get that last calculation out. You can always estimate by looking between a couple points. So it looks like it's going to be about 125 degrees. So my estimate was a little off, but again, I was just rushing that. But I'm going to go ahead and spin ourselves all the way around and point directly at that VOR station. And you're going to get a ground speed off of it, even though, yeah, I know I can look over here. Look at this, by the way. 150 knot ground speed. That means the wind is right behind us. But again, you'll see that once we flip all the way around, you'll get a kick out of this. Now, unfortunately, this aircraft does not have a separate DMA unit. So even though we have the ability to go ahead and point directly at the uh, VOR station, we're not going to be able to get that critical calculation available to us because of the fact that we don't have a separate uh, ground speed. But one, like I said, the techniques is just point the plane right at the VOR station and then read out whatever your particular vertical or your, your speed to the station is and that's going to get you the ground speed in that direction which now means you can work backwards and go ahead and determine what your airspeed is all right hopefully this video has been helpful again i'm just trying to give you some general tips uh, they work fairly well for most situations but again uh, proper planning is going to save you a lot of frustration enjoy